welcome back to the show. As 2017 winds down, we're going to take a look at the military year in review and what 2018 might look like for U.S. soldiers, sailors, airmen, and Marines. Here to talk about that with us is retired U.S. Air Force four-star general, Merrill McPeak. He also served as the acting secretary and the chief of staff of the Air Force, General McPeak. He flew a few fighter missions. He contributed to Kim Burns' v Vietnam documentary, and you recently completed, completed excuse me, a three-volume memoir called the Aerial View Trilogy. All right, so let's. You're the guy to talk to when we want to sit here and take a look at the military. I think you've got enough qualifications and credentials for us here, sir. Thank you for taking the time to be here. Good morning, Bill. I'm delighted to be with you, buddy. Yeah, well, I, I'm very delighted to have you here because you offer a unique perspective. And, and I want to put that perspective to use right now in terms of talking about North Korea. As we are all acutely aware, the rhetoric between North Korea and the United States has grown increasingly heated. It has grown tense. We have leaned on our ally in, chi in China to do something about it. China seems somewhat responsive. Russia has warned us to back off a little bit. And just uh, this week, we learned that Russia and the United States feel like they do have a common interest here. They do want to denuclearize the North Korean regime. That's like one of those things that's really easily said, though, General. I mean, how in the world do we do that? Well, uh, first of all, I favor any course of action short of military action here. Okay. Uh, I'm not optimistic that anything else will work because we've been working it uh, on the diplomatic circuit. We've been trying to get, as you point out, trying to get the Chinese to lean on them trying to cooperate with the Russians. We've imposed uh, economic sanctions and uh, more have been approved. So I really don't know what other tools are left here in our toolkit, but it's clear to me that we have to stop the construction of a intercontinental nuclear delivery capability in this, in this country. And so I think eventually that means we will have to intervene militarily uh, and demolish this nuclear infrastructure that's been built and, and a capability that is progressing quite ra rapidly in uh, North Korea. Is this a situation where an ally got out of control? And I mean that in the sense of China has always used North Korea to its advantage. They're a distraction. They can use them to achieve their own gains and their own ends. Russia, I'm not quite sure why Russia has had a sort of hands-off approach in all of this, but now people do seem to be focused. And it seems to me they're all focused a little bit too late, General. Am I wrong on this? Well, I think too late in terms of a regional capability. Uh, Korea's already shown, North Korea's already shown they have nuclear weapons. Uh, nobody knows for sure how many, but say a dozen or two dozen. And they have a short and medium range capability to deliver these weapons. So uh, it is too late to stop that. I do think that capability can be dismantled and should be dismantled as part of an overall solution here, because it's not good for the North Koreans to be able to threaten Tokyo yeah. or Guam or Manila or Beijing. And I think the Chinese would agree on that. So. Uh, that should not be allowed to stand, but it's not too late in terms of preventing an intercontinental delivery capability, and that's what should concern us. It will, it's quite likely that in six months or a year, it will be too late. So I think there is a, a time limit yeah. on how long we can let this problem fester, but it's not too late to solve it in terms of threats to Chicago and New York City and even Seattle. 